Consider the logical equivalence rule P and Q is equivalent to not, not P, or not Q. For each of the following, circle applies to indicate this rule can be applied directly to the given statement, or cannot apply to indicate it cannot. If the rule can be applied, provide the resulting statement. Okay, so we're working with this logical equivalence rule. We can go from the left side to the right, uh, or we can go from the right side to the left. That's just the way equivalence rules work. But we're going to have to line up whatever statement we're working with uh, with one side or the other of the equivalence rule, uh, or it can't apply. Uh, so let's just try out the first statement here. Uh, in the first statement, we've got D or C and not R. Uh, so there's no negation on the outside, so we're not going to be using the right-hand side of the rule. Uh, we'll use the left-hand side of the rule. So we're going to try and match up against P and Q. That means we need to know what P matches up with. And we've got an AND right in the middle here. So we'll match up P with what's on the left. And we'll match up Q with what's on the right. So this part is P, and this part is Q. Uh, so there is a match, which means the rule can apply. So we can uh, circle that right away. And the result is going to be just right out this right-hand side, except with P replaced by D or C, and Q replaced by not R. And since we're trying to do it directly, I'm going to just write it directly. I'm not going to get rid of any double negations or anything like that. So let's see. We need a not, not. And then we're supposed to put P in here, which is D or C. Or not, and then we're supposed to put Q in here. I'm just going to put parentheses in to be safe. It'll turn out we don't need these parentheses on this side, but there's no reason not to put them in. And that gives us our first application of the rule. OK, so now we're ready to go on to the next application of the rule. Uh, we've got W, X, or V. Uh, there's no AND in here. And to match up with this side of the rule over here on the left, we're going to have to have uh, an AND. To match up with the right-hand side of the rule, we're going to need a negation on the outside, and we're going to need this OR on the inside, and various other things. Uh, w, X, or V doesn't have any of those. So we're, we're not going to be able to apply the rule to this. OK, uh, NOT, NOT M, or NOT N. Now that's a nice, tight match to the right-hand side. So this time, get rid of all of our markings that came from before. Uh, we're going to make sure we can match up to the right-hand side. So we need something to match up against P and something to match up against Q. And I think uh, we're just going to have P be M, and we're going to have Q be N. And let's make sure that reads right. So it would be not, not P, or not Q, not, not P, or not Q. So that's fine. Uh, so when we go to the other side of the rule, we can just read off what's there. We had P and Q before. So we're still going to have the AND. Uh, and then over here, we're going to have whatever stands in for P. And over here, we're going to have whatever stands in for Q. And that's really simple this time. It's just going to be M and N. And we could still leave the parentheses there, but on this one, I just feel a little uncomfortable having them still. So I'm just going to make it M and N straight up. OK, uh, so then we have this last one here. A implies B and not C. Uh, sorry. A implies B and C. Um, now, we do have an AND here. Um, so we could imagine matching up against this part of the statement. This is a logical equivalence rule. So when we replace one sub-expression with its equivalent, according to this logical equivalence rule, on the other side of the rule, uh, we get a new sub-expression that means exactly the same thing. So it should be perfectly safe to put in place of just part of the statement. That's not true of, true of our rules of inference, for example. We can't necessarily replace part of a statement with what would be implied by a rule of inference, because that won't always work. But it will always work to replace a sub-expression with an equivalent sub-expression. We just have to make sure this is a sub-expression. And sure enough, the, the top level operator here is implies. Uh, a is the left-hand operand of that, and B and C is the right-hand operand. So this is its own sub-expression. I usually say we can call it a sub-expression if we can put parentheses around it without changing the meaning of the expression. There's already parentheses around it, so clearly it's OK to replace that. 
So, does it match up with either side of our rule? Well, it's got to be the side with the and. And we're just going to have P, B, B, and Q, B, C. So, B is our P, and C is our Q. So, what we can do when we apply this is just write out the A arrow part right away because the rest of it just fits in that blank where we used to have P and Q. So, instead of having P and Q, we're going to have not, not P, or not Q. And our P is B, our Q is C, so it's going to be not, not, oh, I'm sorry, I said P. Not, not B, or not C. And I'm going to go ahead and leave those parentheses in that were there before. Again, it's going to turn out to be OK not to have them, but there's no reason not to have them anyway. And that's it. We've done the problem.